I want to take on a challenge today that I think every artist should try. I'm going to put all of the many colors that I have to one side and try drawing with just three primary colors and black and white. This is going to be good color theory revision. It's also going to be really good at training your brain to seeing color adjustments. For example, if in a drawing your colors are looking a bit wonky to you and you can't quite work out why, it'll help to train your brain to be able to see that there's yellow missing, for example. So let's start this in the way that I always do by swatching out my colors. This is always important, but it is even more so because I have such limited colors. I started off by swatching out the red, yellow and blue, and then I could see a bit easier which colors I was working with. What I wanted to do was mark the color harder at the top and lighter at the bottom, and then I can see the range that I'm working with for each color. Then I wanted to go over the top with the white pencil just so I can see what the white does to each colour. I didn't want to go over the whole swatch though because I did still want to keep the original colour as it was. I found that the white pencil wasn't doing a huge amount, more than anything it was blending together the colours that were there. It wasn't really lightening them up. That was interesting, it showed me that I would be able to smooth colours out with the white but I wouldn't be able to lighten them up. I also wanted to swatch out my secondary colours so I mixed together orange, green and purple and then I could see on the most basic level what I was working with. I tried to use equal colours of each of the primaries so that I knew that this was kind of my standard purple rather than making a more reddish purple for example. Now on these bottom three I did want to see what would happen if I muted their colours a little bit. What I did was pick the colour on the opposite side of the colour wheel. So for example, for orange, I picked blue. As you can see, when I put this over the top, it made the orange still orange, but a less vibrant orange. And where I added a little bit more, it made it more like a brown. So I've swatched out the primary and secondary colours. Now I want to take a look at the reference I'm going to draw. So I wanted to draw something vibrant, but I didn't want to pick something that was just made of primary colours because I think that would be a bit too easy. I've picked this cupcake and I've chosen it because it's a mixture of vibrant and earthy colours. Looking at the reference, there is on the icing at the top a teal colour on the left, purple in the middle and yellow on the right. Now this teal colour is a very, very different kind of blue to the blue that I have. I want to practice this by drawing this out as a swatch as well. It'll be easier than going into this blind. So I can start with a light amount of the blue and then I'm going to put some white on top of that just to smooth it out and it'll stop me having to build up too much blue. And then on top of that, I'm going to put a tiny little bit of yellow just because teal is sort of an ever so slightly greeny blue. And then I can play around a little bit more with the blue and the yellow until I get to the shade I want. I'm happy now that I know how to create this teal colour. There are other tricky colours within this drawing but I'm not going to show you me swatching out every single colour because that would be really boring. Let's just jump into the drawing instead. Now I wanted to apply what I'd learned from building the teal on the swatches so I started off by putting down a base with the blue. I wanted to use this as a way to mark out the key shapes and the key lights and darks and I marked out the darks by literally just building up more layers on the darker areas. So I was pressing very very lightly throughout the whole thing but just building up the colour a bit more where I wanted it to be a darker teal. And then once I was happy with the general base framework then I could go over the top of that with the white just to smooth that and blend it all together. I then learned from those swatches that I need a little bit of yellow as well, so I can put a tiny little touch of yellow over the top, and then I kept building up the blue, the yellow and the white until it reached the colour that I wanted. Very similar was true of the purple section. I already knew the rough purple colour that I was going to get from those swatches. So I began by putting down a base layer of red and marking out those lights and darks again and then going over the top of that with the blue to gradually build up to a purple colour. Now I thought it would be easiest to roughly mark out the whole icing area first and then I could go back and add any extra details at the end. The yellow was much easier because I do have a yellow pencil so I didn't actually have to do any mixing for this area. That said, when I put down my base of yellow, there was a few folds in the icing that were almost a yellowish brown. So I needed to make that brown, I didn't have a brown. And I did that by putting down some yellow, red and blue, and when mixed together, they will make the brown. 
and to make it more of a yellowish brown I just put more yellow over the top and it just sort of adjusted the colour. Once I'd gone over the whole icing area once, I then wanted to brighten it up and make it look much more vibrant. I went over it again in the same way, but focusing a bit more on getting the darker areas as dark as possible. Up until this point, I haven't used any black. If I wanted to make an area darker, I generally mix together the three colours to make a dark brown. Once everything was looking much more vibrant, it was a bit easier then to see which areas I needed to add the black in. So there was only a couple of areas where the icing had very dark shadows. On the most part, I was using the black just to very, very lightly put over the top of the colors I'd made. I just wanted to slightly deepen them down a bit more, but I didn't want most of it to have a garish black. So that was the slightly easier part of the drawing. The cake base was much, much harder. It was a much more complicated color. As I mentioned, I would say that it was a sort of orangish brown. So I decided to start off by building up a light orange, so mixing that yellow and red. And then also in some of the shadows created by the icing, they were very red colored shadows. So then I went in a bit firmer with the red just to try and mark out where those shadows are going to be. Then because I didn't want the orange to be too bright or too vibrant, I added a very, very light covering of the blue. I picked blue because it is the complementary color to orange. And as I said, that does just mute the color. That almost created a purple color, which showed me that I needed to add more yellow. Now it was at this point that I thought it would be helpful to add some of the shadows underneath the icing and make them a bit clearer. So I used the black pencil just to very, very lightly mark in those shadows. And then from there, I continued to slowly build up a mixture of the yellow, red and blue until I felt like the cake matched the reference. I wanted it to be quite vibrant, but still look like a cake. I would say the hardest part of the whole drawing was the cupcake case. I think if I had have picked a reference photo where it wasn't a clear cupcake case, it would have been much easier if it was just a blue case, for example. But because it was that cake color again, but also mixed in with a few different reds and greens, it did make it far more tricky and it did take the longest out of the whole drawing. But I went about it in the same way again. So building up a base mostly made up of red and yellow with a little hint of blue so that the orange doesn't look too vibrant. And then using the black to fill in the more prominent shadows. There was quite a deep shadow in the bottom right and I really wanted that to come across. I wouldn't be able to get the brown when all of those colors were mixed together to be as dark as the black would be. Now, as I mentioned, the white polychromos pencil is really only useful for blending once I've put the color down. I can't use it over the top to add white back in. So I did decide to almost cheat a little bit at this point. It's really just because I wasn't happy with how it had come out. I didn't think it had enough contrast. It looked okay, but not quite as good as I wanted it to. So I just added in a few of the very brightest areas with the Jelly Roll pen and then that was it. All in all, I'd say this turned out okay. It's not as perfect as it would have been if I had a full set of colors, but that's not really what the challenge is. The challenge was, can I create these colors using just three primaries? I would recommend trying something like this as a challenge, but for day-to-day -day drawing, I personally would stick to at least 20 colors. That'll give you more choice and shades of color to pick. Of course, that only helps if you know how to pick colors. And if that's something you struggle with, check out this video here. Happy drawing, guys. I'll see you in the next one.